Welcome to this Access Anatomy screencast from the University of Leeds that's going to outline the musculature of the gluteal region, the posterior aspect of the hip joint. Now on the screen we can see we've got four identical drawings showing the hip joint. Here we have the sacrum, we have the external surface of the ilium, we have the femur, we have the head of the femur, we have the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter. We have the acetabulum where the head of the femur articulates and importantly we have two ligaments extending from the sacrum to the ischium. Running from the sacrum to this feature which is known as the ischial spine is the sacrospinous ligament and running from the sacrum to the ischial tuberosity here we have the sacrotuberous ligament. These two ligaments are important as they convert this greater sciatic notch and this lesser sciatic notch into a greater sciatic foramen and a lesser sciatic foramen. So the sacrospinous ligament forms this greater sciatic foramen and the sacrotuberous and the sacrospinous help to form this lesser sciatic foramen. So these are important landmarks that you should remember as we go through the musculature. Now on each of these I'm going to draw um, either one or a few muscles. So on this one I'm going to draw gluteus maximus. This is the largest of the gluteal muscles, gluteus maximus. And then deep to that, on this one, I'm going to draw gluteus medius. Here I'm going to draw gluteus minimus, the deepest of these three gluteal muscles. And then on this one, I'm going to draw a whole series of what are known as lateral rotators. And as their name suggests, they laterally rotate the thigh. So they move the thigh away from the midline, as if you're turning your right leg rightwards, turning it outwards. There's a series of these muscles. One is called piriformis. We have a superior and an inferior gemellus muscle. So we have some gemelli. We have obturator internus muscle. And we also have quadratus femoris. And we'll come to those in a moment. First of all, let's start with gluteus maximus. Now, gluteus maximus is going to originate from the posterior surface of the ilium, so from around about here. It's also going to come from the posterior surface of the sacrum, so around here. And it's also going to come from the sacrotuberous ligament and parts of the ischial tuberosity. So this is its origin and in most of its fibres are actually going to end up passing down towards an important tract called the iliotibial tract and that's an important fascial layer that helps to stabilise the knee joint. We won't cover it in much detail but we'll just appreciate the gluteus maximus fibres pass into it and they do so in this kind of arrangement which we can just draw out here. So this is the origin and then we can see the insertion onto this iliotibial tract muscle. So I can draw out some of the fibres here. Now not all of the fibres go towards this iliotibial tract. Some of them actually do pass towards the posterior surface of the femur and on here we can see a series of these muscle fibres passing onto what's known as the gluteal gluteal tuberosity and this is on the posterior surface of the femur and about 25% or a third of the muscle fibres pass on to this gluteal tuberosity. If we then look at the gluteus medius muscle deep to gluteus maximus then this muscle originates from the external surface of the ilium from between these two lines here this is known as your posterior gluteal line and this is known as your anterior gluteal line. And these muscle fibres originate from the space in between these two lines and they pass to the greater trochanter of the femur and they do so in about this direction. And here we can see we can see the fibres of gluteus medius running down in this direction. 
Gluteus minimus does something very similar. It attaches to the greater trochanter. And this comes from in between two lines. Here again is the posterior gluteal line, and here is the inferior gluteal line. And gluteus minimus is going to come from this direction. And we can see gluteus minimus running in this direction here. Again, going towards the greater trochanter. So here we can see our three gluteal muscles, gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, and gluteus minimus. Now, gluteus maximus is important. It's involved in extending the thigh. So it extends the thigh. It's also involved in some lateral rotation. And it's vitally important in assisting standing from a seated position. So gluteus maximus here, it extends the thigh and it's an important lateral rotator. Gluteus medius and gluteus minimus carry out similar functions. These two muscles are involved in medial rotation, so that's the opposite to lateral rotation, medial rotation. And as you can imagine by the direction of their muscle fibres, when these muscle fibres contract, they can also abduct the femur. So they can abduct the femur in this direction, away from the midline. Gluteus medius, gluteus minimus are important in abducting the femur at the hip joint. So now let's turn to our lateral rotators, which we can see over here. And the first one I want to talk about is piriformis. Now piriformis actually originates on the anterior surface of the sacrum. So we're seeing the posterior surface here. Piriformis actually comes from the anterior surface of the sacrum. And it passes out of the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen. So it passes out of the pelvis in this direction. And it assumes a triangle shape as it passes out and heads towards the greater trochanter of the femur here. So piriformis, it's coming from the posterior, it's coming from the anterior surface of the sacrum, passes out of the greater sciatic foramen and attaches to the greater trochanter. Just inferior to piriformis, and I'll do this in a slightly different colour. Inferior to piriformis, we have the first of our gemelli muscles, and this is superior gemellus. And superior gemellus runs really from the ischial spine, and it goes straight across towards the greater jacanta again. So ischial spine across to the greater jacanta. Coming from beneath the superior gemellus, we have inferior gemellus. And that passes in a similar direction, but it comes from a piece of the ischial tuberosity and it runs in this direction. So here we have inferior gemellus and then the orange muscle above it we have superior gemellus which we can see there. In the red one we've got piriformis up here. Quadratus femoris is the most inferior of these muscles and this passes from the ischial tuberosity and it goes straight across towards what's known as the intertrochanteric crest. This crest that's running between the greater and the lesser trochanters. So here we can see the quadratus femoris muscle. Quadratus femoris here. And that leaves this final muscle, which is obturator internus. Obturator internus is going to originate from the inside of the pelvis, the inside surface of obturator foramen. And this passes out, just draw these kind of hookings here, passing out of the lesser sciatic foramen. It's coming from the inside of the pelvis, so coming from the inside of the obturator foramen, and it leaves via the lesser sciatic foramen. And this is obturator internus. These muscles together are important as they laterally rotate the thigh. The quadratus femoris muscle is important as it helps to steady the femoral head in the acetabulum as well. So here we have our lateral rotators.